Hello, everybody. Kayla, would you like me to run the meeting? Or would you like to? Hello. Sure, if you wouldn't mind, that would be great. I cannot get my video to start and had trouble with my audio. So if I will going through the meeting, but if you would, that'd be great. Okay, that sounds good. Um, just one second, Mr. Fiedler had to run down the hall and grab something from his office and we'll start when he returns. Cool. <clears throat> Um, good afternoon. It is 12.03, December 30th, for a special meeting of the Board of Commissioners. Um, I, I ask everyone to turn off their cell phones. I will be, oh wait, let me, are we recording? Yes, uh, it's paused. Okay. This meeting is being recorded. Okay. <laughs> Apologies. Bro. All right. Um, okay. We will start the special meeting with the Pledge of Allegiance and a moment of silence, please. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the stands one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, do I have an approval of the agenda? Agenda? Do we need to change any items? Uh, no changes for me. Okay, so. I don't have anything to change either. Commissioner Marcella? None for me either. None for me. Okay. Uh, I move that we approve the agenda as is. I'll second, second. that. Okay, I'll second. Great. Um, any further discussion? None for me. Okay. No, thank you. All righty, all those in favor? Aye. Hi. <laughs> okay. Uh, any community informational items today, Commissioner Marcella? Um, no, that just that we're continuing to work on um, transportation and implementation of that project. I'll meet with our consultants next week to review some of the um, legal stuff that we need to have completed for the Federal Transit Authority to accept federal money for transportation, like our Title VI policy, ling uh, English language proficiency policy, those kinds of things. So we'll meet next Tuesday to go over those um, and then see what our next steps are. So that's all I've got for today, but thank you. Great. Commissioner Fiedler? Uh, not for me. Okay, I just, just a quick reminder, uh, you know, with the Nordic grooming and all that should be taking place. Um, I think any delays or conditions are are a result of the weather and, and the actual snow on the ground. Um, it does have to be adequate enough out of the golf course, and uh, we certainly don't want to ruin what conditions or compaction, I guess I should say, that we can get on the mineral belt, but we do have dedicated folks um, to, to do all that grooming. So um, hopefully we'll get some snow sometime soon. <laughs> Um, that's about all I have. Are there any commissioner clarifications? I have none. None for me. None for me. Okay. Um, and then we'll go into public comments. Uh, citizens wishing to speak to, to the board on issues not on the agenda um, can send a message in the chat for us, please, or raise your hand. Um, we will call on you. You have three minutes. Um, we don't have any other public in the room with us. Is there anyone online who wishes to make a public comment? <clears throat> I don't see anyone indicating that they do. Okay, seeing none, we'll move into new business then. Uh, okay, first item of new business, consideration of Resolution 2233, a supplemental budget for fiscal year 2022. <laughs> and this will be led by Crystal Hewlett, our finance director, who is with us in the room. Yes. Thanks, Crystal. Thank you. Good afternoon. 
Um, yeah, so I have um, in front of me a resolution 22 33, um, a resolution approving the transfer of previously appropriated monies between funds um, or between spending agencies of Lake County um, and adopting a supplemental budget and making supplemental and revised appropriations for Lake County, Colorado for the fiscal year beginning January 1st, 2022, and ending um, December 31st of 2022. Um, so would you like me to read through the resolution and then we can go over that, um, any of the changes? Yeah, that would be great okay. if you would. Thank you. All right. Uh, whereas the annual budget for Lake County, Colorado for the fiscal year beginning January 1st, 2022 and ending December 31st, 2022 has previously been approved by the Board of County Commissioners of Lake County and whereas it is necessary to make certain adjustments to the county's 2022 fiscal year budget by transferring previously appropriated funds of the county between the various funds and spending agencies of the county and adopting a supplemental budget for the county and making supplemental and revised appropriations for the county for the fiscal year 2022 in order to reflect unanticipated revenues and expenditures which have occurred during the 22 2022 budget year. And whereas section 29-1-1085 CRS, which is part of the local government budget law of Colorado, provides that changes to an adopted budget, budget or appropriation must be made in accordance with the provisions in section 29-1-109 CRS. <clears throat> And whereas section 29-1-109 CRS requires that any transfer, supplemental appropriations, or revised appropriations be made by, be made by ordinance or resolution following notice and a public hearing held in accordance with the requirements of section 29-1-106 um, CRS. <clears throat> and whereas a public hearing on the proposed changes of the county's 2022 fiscal year budget was held on December 30th, 2022, following notice published in the Herald Democrat on December 29th, 2022, which notice complied with the requirements of section 29-1-106 CRS. And whereas interested electors were given an opportunity to file any objections to the proposed changes to the county's 2022 fiscal year budget in accordance with law, <clears throat> And whereas the Board of County Commissioners of Lake County, Colorado have considered any such objections and fines and determines that the changes to the county's 2022 fiscal year budget here and after set forth are necessary and appropriate. Now, therefore, be it resolved by the Board of County Commissioners of Lake County, Colorado, Section 1, the county's 2022 fiscal year budget as previously adopted is hereby supplemented and amended to reflect the following additions, revisions, and width. Um, I don't know. I did send you a copy. I don't know if you wanted it up there or not. But, um, yeah, in there. I get it. Okay. So the uh, the first item for um, supplemental is for the public health fund. Um, public health received um, new grant monies through 2022 and receiving the new money caused our expenditures to go up to spend down those grants. Um, so the original budget was 957,236. The new budget is 1,057,236 um, for those new grant monies that were spent down. The second is the airport fund. The original budget was 527,516. The new budget is 750,000 um, for jet fuel and utilities. Um, as we have all experienced in this past year, increase in fuel and utilities has gone up, which caused the uh, airport's expenses, expenses to go up. Um, as well as the revenues for those um, helicopters and, and planes that are coming in and using our facilities. Um, so the revenue did help up to offset that. <clears throat> uh, 
Um, next up is the Conservation Trust Fund. Um, we had a zero um, dollar amount in the original budget. Um, new budget is $12,000 for professional services. Um, this includes dog grooming, um, dugout repairs at Lighter Field, um, and the Hayden Ranch Trail Project. Um, next up is the Contingent Fund. And those, sorry, Chris, if I get the Go dog grooming, those are programs offered by the rec department, I believe, for the dog grooming and the um sorry yes yes one. so and the grooming. third was a county project mm -hmm. yeah. that ctf funds were used to Correct. purchase materials yes yep um and i think those were probably um originally started with, with amber but nothing was put in the budget before at that time so um next we have the contingency fund uh we had a um zero budget to begin with um and our new budget is Four million dollars. Um, this was a transfer from the general fund to the contingency fund for the justice center project, um, and those dollars were moved into the professional services line. Um, of those monies, I think we've spent about one point two twenty-two. <clears throat> um, next, we have the recreation replacement fund. Um, it also had a zero budget for 22. Um, new budget is $500 in professional services. Um, the dog park has rolled up into the recreation replacement fund. And this was for reimbursement for dog bags for the, for the dog park. Um, and last, we have search and rescue. Um, original budget was 25500 New budget, 38780 for equipment. Um, this was for a Stidu that was purchased in 22. However, we did receive the funding um, towards the end of 21 for that. So it was grant revenue that we spent down. <clears throat> Section two, there is hereby appropriated from the revenue set forth above to the several county funds and spending agencies described above the amount set forth above. Section three, the supplementary budget described above is hereby approved and adopted and shall be signed by the chair of the Board of County Commissioners and made a part of the public record of the county. Section four, pursuant to section 29-1-109 CRS, a certified copy of this res resolution shall be filed with the Division of Local Government and the Department of Local Affairs of the State of Colorado. Section 5, pursuant to Section 29-1-1085 CRS, this resolution shall become effective upon adoption adopted this 30th day of December 2022. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you, Crystal. Of course. Any questions for Crystal from the commissioners or manager? No, for me. I don't. I don't have any questions, but I'm wondering um, <clears throat> if it. It would be better suited not today obviously to change this this resolution but going forward if we move that justice center money to a separate fund for the justice center and capture like um an appropriation for the cop payment and any money spent on the construction tim would would that be better than the contingency fund or do you guys think it's okay where it's at um i <clears throat> we can do whatever you'd like we just wanted to um reflect a better general fund balance for the board and for the public. So the contingent okay. fund was already existing and kind of why we put it there. So <clears throat> up to you on the path for it if you want a separate uh, mm -hmm. Justice Center fund or a new, I guess, capital, maybe some kind of capital fund, uh, we can do that. Um, but for, for okay. or, or just to Kayla's point, like some, some, I, I don't know, what column the coding goes in, but some clear coding so we can, you know, track everything that is 
you know, out, um, you know, related to the Justice Center. I mean, I imagine that would help just for like grant tracking or, you know, being able, yeah. Um, so yeah. the contingency fund had a beginning balance of 300,000. It has not ever been used since I've been here. I, I don't know when if, or if ever it's been used. Um, so there's been no activity in there. So the Justice Center would be the only activity in there. Okay. Um, if we wanted to, we could move that 300,000 back out under contingency EOCC or Tim's budget as well. But there's nothing, there's no other activity in there to confuse it with anything else at this time. So we okay. could really, um, you know, if we wanted to either maybe rename even. Sure. Um, so yeah, whatever makes the most sense, but there's no, no activity. So there's nothing to skew it right now. Okay, Crystal, I think you and Tim and I can maybe talk about that after the first of the new year. Um, and we can go from there. Okay, thank you. Yeah, no problem. Okay. No other questions, I'll entertain a motion to approve resolution 22-33 for the supplemental budget for fiscal year 2022. I move that we approve resolution 22-33, supplemental budget for fiscal year 2022. I'll second. Any further discussion? None for me. None for me, thank you. Nothing for me. All right, hearing no more, all those in favor, aye. 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 Great, much appreciated, Kristen. Thank you so much. Um, all right, and number two on our new business, consideration of master service agreement with GWorks, a company that acquired PubWorks. So PubWorks uh, has been our software and tracking through for public works, um, and they have been acquired at GWorks. And this is just kind of recording that new agreement under the new name. Um, I got, I think, brief update or info from Michael that our term with them it's really like it sounds like a month to month right so yeah so it can be it's not locking us into anything or a new like long-term commitment um, but since it's been acquired by a new company there's a new master service agreement like you know anything you download on your phone or whatever um, so that's what this is um, to be able to continue using the software okay and we'll go, I see Chris is raised her hand, but we'll go, uh, yeah, we'll continue in the beginning of 2023 to make sure that everything, um, that all the services and the, and the resources we were getting with PubWorks is transitioning over to this new company or with this new company. Chris, do you have a comment? Yeah, I was just going to mention, I apologize if this is in my inbox somewhere and I did not see it, but I don't know that I've had a chance to look at the MSA for this. And so I, I think I would just ask to be able to take a look at it to see in terms of the, the terms that there's nothing that's going to um, create any issues for us going forward. Okay. Sounds good. Um, I'll entertain a motion for approval pending legal review. I move that we approve the master service agreement with GWorks um, pending final legal review. I'll second. All right. Any further discussion? None, none from me. Thank you. Okay. Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 All right. And number three uh, consideration of licensing requirements for secure transportation services. Um, Tim or Chris, you want to speak to yeah, this? Yeah, and I'm, yeah, either, Tim, if you want to start, or I can start either way. Um, it doesn't matter, just so for background, so House Bill 21 1085 um, was passed last year and then adopted in June, um, creates a regulatory and service system to provide public or private secure transportation services to individuals experiencing a behavioral health crisis. Uh, there are a series of, um, I don't know if you want to call them, providers that are excluded from this, like uh, law enforcement, um, local EMS. However, um, there's one thing in our, in our ambulance service that this does apply to is um, generally when 
uh, someone is experiencing a behavioral health crisis, they use um, an SUV, the Ford Explorer you see, um, and not one of the ambulance rigs. So the, uh, the SUV itself would be subject to this. Um, there's a the effective date of this, or well, the, re the requirement from the state is that the county um, creates a program including issuing the licenses and vehicle permits for such transports um, by January 1, 2023. Um, we've, uh, we've pulled, we, uh, Chris has worked closely with other counties and Archuleta County actually was kind of the lead on this. So we've um, borrowed from that, um, worked with the state, worked with Jeremiah at the ambulance service and with our um, human services director and public health director as well to make sure that no other county services are impacted. Tim, is this similar to the ambulance licensing? That uh, I, I think it, no, I would, I would say it's a, a bit different um, because of the different requirements. I mean, it's, in the similar vein, if you want, in terms of the intent of the licenses to ensure that the folks providing this type of trans um, transportation are do have the right kind of equipment and, and that type of thing. So it's okay. similar in that vein, but but overall it's a bit different. And um, as Tim said, you know, this is something that uh, was mandated by the state without a lot of. Um, I, 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 don't, I don't want to say advanced warning in order because it probably was advanced warning, but in terms of consideration of, of counties like Lake for mandating something like this, which at this point in time, I don't know that we even have a private, you know, secure transport provider uh, that wouldn't fall under one of the exceptions, except in regards to what Tim was saying about the SUV and stuff that they use. But um just the, the requirement to have this in place. I don't expect there'll be much of any enforcement type actions anytime soon, which will give us the opportunity to uh, go through the draft documents and make sure that they're, they're finalized, if you will, in a way that will logistically work for Lake County, because there are a lot of different elements to this that, that have to, to be put into place and be considered. And so really one of the biggest questions about this program and, and Tim, I don't know if you've had a chance to talk with Janine and, and Colleen or, or Jeremiah more and stuff in terms of where this will live, you know, what, you know, behavioral health issues you, the, the presumption would be perhaps in, in, you know, human services, public health, but then the, a lot of the requirements have to do with vehicle inspections and all of that kind of stuff. So I think we might end up needing uh, some collaborative efforts, if you will, um, between, you know, public health and the sheriff's office, for example, and stuff with, with some of this stuff, because I, I don't know that our public health folks are going to be uniquely qualified to be able to, to shepherd through a lot of the technical aspects of this. Okay. So that's why, like today, this is another one where um, my recommendation that I provided a draft resolution for approval of these. They're not final though yet. So I don't know if you're, you're comfortable with, with approving them pending final legal review or so we can finally, because there are blanks in the documents that need to be filled in. And we haven't had a chance to, I think all the stakeholders to get together and meet and talk through the logistics of that. If, if, um, and if we wait until those discussions have happened, are we sort of technically in violation then? I mean, well, and that's, I, I would say perhaps technically, but I think it's one of those technical violations that might not have much teeth to it uh, because I think as long as we come into compliance as soon as possible before any enforcement action that you, you'd be okay. And like I said, to my knowledge, and Tim, correct me if I'm wrong, to my knowledge, we don't have any secure transport providers right now that would need to be separately licensed by this. Um, so, but you'll also notice if you had a chance to look at the resolution I drafted, it is incredibly general and it it pretty much just is a resolution to adopt the um, the policy, if you will, uh, for it. Okay, and we'll continue. It just says you're, you're adopting a policy regarding secure transportation. And so, 
the, the policy, we can attach the draft as exhibit A um, in order to technically be in compliance. But there's also nothing that I saw in the act that prevents the county from continually to, mo to monitor and modify the policy and the different aspects, elements of implementing it um, as you go forward. And so I, I would just see it in that type of a vein. And, and in all honesty, I think we're one of probably a dozen other counties that are scrambling with this right now just to get something in place to be in compliance, but knowing that we don't have all the answers yet for how it'll actually work in our counties. Yeah. <laughs> all right. I mean, I'm comfortable with the soft language in the resolution just to, you know, show that we're doing our diligence to, to get to into Compliance. Um, what number resolution is that? Yeah, and I didn't, I'm sorry, I did not know which number we were up to for that. 34. 34? Okay. Commissioner Marcel, do you have any other questions? No, I think I'm, I'm good with this. I'm good with the language in there. Um, I do know that CCI has some resources that um, they're assisting counties that may not <clears throat> have the capability to fully shift their attention to this right away that, that they can assist us with if we need it. So I'm, I'm okay with that. Yeah, and, and uh, Kayla, I would say that um, CCI, what they pr provided to the different counties as part of their toolkit, if you weren't, will, were the draft document, as Tim said, Archuleta yeah. County, um, stepped up and took the lead on creating drafts that would be compliant, and those were reviewed by the county attorney group and by CCI and stuff to make sure that we had good working templates. And so that's part of the toolkit. So all the documents that you you that mm -hmm. I sent to you, all the different forms and stuff like that, all I did was pretty much customize them to Lake County, um, but they're pretty much the same. And and again, I think we need to perhaps have a work session with the different stakeholders to, or Tim and I need to have a work session with the different stakeholders to really talk through the logistics so that then we can come back to you and say, here's our recommendation as to how it should be implemented for the county. Okay. Yeah. I, I guess then the question I had is like, do, are we, are we considering the resolution I mean, do we just consider it, given that it's written kind of vaguely, or do we need to say pending legal review, or I mean, do we need to say anything other than the discussion we just had? About well, so the so here's the one of the reasons that that resolution is so general is it just has you adopting the policy that you're adopting a policy of um, how does it actually read oh, there? It just says. The board hereby adopts a policy regarding secure transportation, and then we'll, if, if you want, we can certainly change it, said so the draft of the policy is attached here to as exhibit A or something like that, if you more comfortable um, acknowledging it's a draft, but otherwise, I mean, the only thing left in the draft right now are to plug in, you know, certain like website address where the page is going to be for this information and, and stuff like that, the, the logistical kind of stuff. So my, my suggestion would be to, to go in and adopt the resolution if you're comfortable doing so, and then Tim and I can work with the other stakeholders to get the documents finalized for implementation. Yeah, that sounds good. I'll read the uh, resolution into the record. It's very short. You said 34? I'm sorry. Yes. Sorry. Right? Okay. okay. Um, so this would be resolution 2234, a resolution of the Board of County Commissioners of Lake County, Colorado, adopting the Lake County policy procedures regarding secure transportation services, whereas House Bill 21-1085 adopted in June 2021 created a regulatory and service system to provide public or private secure transportation services to individuals experiencing a behavioral health crisis, and whereas the bill directed each county's Board of County Commissioners to implement a program including issuing licenses and vehicle permits for such transports processing complaints and enforcement of the rules associated with the program, and whereas the bill directed each county to have such pro a program in place by January 1st, 2023. 
Now, therefore, be it resolved by the Board of County Commissioners of Lake County, Colorado, that the board hereby adopts a policy regarding secure transportation services. The policy is attached here to as Exhibit A. Um, that is that is the extent of the resolution. Okay. Um, do you should we just put the draft policy, or I mean, should we have? I don't know so, how long how long so again the, yeah. yeah so again the policy right, right now just has it, it there are a couple of blanks that need to be filled in in it and so you could certainly um certainly attach it if you feel like you want to uh, or we could wait until um I mean you could do it for now as the draft and then we could I guess always amend the resolution later with the final version if that would make you more comfortable. I really don't have a strong feeling either way. <laughs> I'm, yeah, I'm with you, Sarah. And it'll be quick to, um, once we meet with our, the stakeholders, like, we, and Chris is right, we do not have any private providers in Lake County that provide this service. The only one that would be subject to this is the SUV used by the ambulance service. Okay. Um, so I and I doubt that Lake County will have a provider like that in the future. Could be wrong, but okay. Yeah, this is uh, the compliance with all this is somewhat of a heavy lift. So it's not going to be. We don't have a large enough market, I don't think, for these type of services that will make it attractive. So probably what will happen, a lot of counties are talking about just engaging ones that are already licensed um, in adjacent counties to then pick it up for, for Lake as well. Okay. Um, well, if, yeah, I mean, you all are, have been working on this, so if you're fine with it included in there as an exhibit to the resolution, that's okay with me. Well, that's fine with me, Chris. Um, yeah. That uh, it's fine. And then, like I said, once we get it, uh, you know, the final draft, we can always come back and uh, I guess, even though I get, yeah, we can amend the resolution with the final draft if we need to do that. So what's, what's subsequently recorded will be the actual policy, the final policy. So you're saying just change that and put the draft of the policy is attached? Is that what you're well, asking? You could do it. I think you could right now, it's, it's the, right now, the, the meat of the policy is there. It's just some blanks that need to be filled in to get it finalized. Right. So I don't think this, I don't think anything substantive is going to change with the policy. It'll just be finalized with the additional information. Okay. So no changes need to be made to the language in the resolution. I, I think you're good for it today. Okay. Okay. All right. Um, if there aren't any further questions, I'll entertain a motion uh, for the adoption of resolution 22-34. I move that we approve resolution 22-34 regarding the licensing requirements for secure transportation services. Okay, I'll second. I'll second. Oh, sorry. <laughs> That's okay. Um, any, what's that? Who do I put you or? Sure, me. No. Okay. Um, <laughs> Any further discussion? Discussion? None for me. Okay. None for me, thank you. All right. Uh, hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 All righty. Thank you very much. Appreciate you being online for that, Chris. <clears throat> um, yeah. And number four is uh, item of business is uh, going into executive session pursuant to crs 24-6-4024 b and e for the purpose of receiving information and legal advice pertaining to specific legal questions as well as determining positions relative to matters that may be subject to negotiations and instructing negotiators relating to resolution of pending claims um, so i'll entertain a motion to go into executive session uh, so moved. I'll second. All right. Um, and any further discussion? I'll just say 
joining us, I believe, will be the county manager and um, legal counsel. And I don't think we'll have anybody else joining, right? Uh, It'll be you and yeah. Chris. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, all right. Is there any further discussion? One motion to go into executive session. None for me. None for me. Okay. Um, I guess I also will add that we will close the Zoom and reopen. Um, do we have an estimated time of the conversation? We it had? Probably. Quick. Yeah, it should be really quick. The um, and I, I apologize. Is there a separate link for me to jump on with the executive session? I could create one for you if you don't mind, and just email that to me real quick. Yeah. Me too, please. I'll uh, <clears throat> Chris and Kayla. I'll send it to you. Okay. 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 Thank you. Thank you. All okay. Right. Great. Um, hearing no further discussion, I'll take a roll call, and then we will close the Zoom and reopen um, once we come out of executive session. Uh, all of those in favor, motion on the floor. Aye. 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 All right, and we'll go into executive session at 12.38. Thank you very much, Cindy. Mm -hmm. We'll grab you and move through. Okay. Cindy. Mm -hmm. 12.38. Mm -hmm. Look at that, I'm going to go back. 